All right, the fine Friday edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. We're getting set for St. Patrick's Day weekend, and before we get to our future weather, let's review what was a pretty remarkable evening last evening across much of Ohio. Thanks to everyone who tuned in to the live streaming coverage. Thankfully, things did not really get out of hand around here, and they never were expected to. We had a few uh, severe thunderstorm warnings in the region, southern Columbiana County, over into parts of Lawrence, Beaver, and Butler counties in PA, and we had some small hail embedded in some of those storms. But, of course, the much bigger deal was out to our west, with three kind of distinct swaths of tornado warnings. All the kind of uh, pink or purple uh, polygons here are tornado warnings issued by the National Weather Service offices in Cleveland and Wilmington uh, last evening. And unfortunately with this came several confirmed tornadoes. Uh, Daylight brought about some ugly scenes uh, across parts of Western Ohio especially. And we wanna focus mostly on this particular tornado here to kind of get your bearings. Over here's Columbus, this is Dayton and uh, a ways up the road northeast of Dayton and northwest of Columbus. We have kind of a, a small community, of course, uh, near uh, Indian Lake uh, called Lakeview. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a touristy spot. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, camps around uh, this lake and uh, some beautiful homes, no doubt, around there. And unfortunately, they took the brunt of what turned out to be an EF3 tornado last evening. One of a handful of tornadoes confirmed today, and this list is probably not complete yet. The Weather Service will probably complete all of their surveys over the weekend, but we stand at about six or so uh, tornadoes, including that EF3 in Logan County, Ohio, EF2 in Crawford County, Ohio. That's not Crawford County, Pennsylvania, up in northwestern PA. This is Crawford County, Ohio, and several EF1 tornadoes. And, you know, the uh, EF3 was only the fourth EF3 uh, tornado in Ohio history in the month of March. We've never had an EF4 or EF5 in March, but we have had now four EF3s, including one in the Valley back in 1955. Uh, there was also one in 1956 in Ohio and most recently in 2012. And this is a map showing all those relatively strong March tornadoes, EF2 and higher, uh, in our database. Uh, this one in our area is a little bit tricky kind of researching this. I've seen you know, a couple of conflicting reports on where exactly this was. A couple of articles online uh, had it up in Trumbull County. Uh, the Vindicator, uh, we were able to find an article from March 1st, 1955, talking about this tornado occurring just to the east of Youngstown in Mahoning County at about 1.50 in the morning. Um, that seems to be the most reliable information. So our map here may be a little bit off as far as the placement of that uh, F3. This is back when we had the regular Fujita scale, not the enhanced Fujita scale. Um, it was an F3 early in the morning on the morning of March the 1st, 1955. But as you can see region-wide, a lot of F2s, but only a handful of uh, F3s, EF3s, and never an EF4 or EF5 in Ohio during the month of March. All right, so this is all uh, coming just before Severe Weather Awareness Week in the state of Ohio, which runs from uh, Sunday through next Saturday. This includes the statewide tornado drill Wednesday morning at 9.50. We're going to be talking a lot about Severe Weather Awareness Week next week, as we usually do when the weather permits, here on Weather for Weather Geeks and on social media and on our newscasts as well. Chances are, if you're watching this video, uh, you have more than just a baseline awareness of severe weather and the best practices, uh, some of the things that uh, we really preach and harp on during Severe Weather Awareness Week. Uh, we don't want people to rely on sirens and other ways to stay safe and get warned. So we'll talk all about that coming up next week. In the meantime, our weather today was pretty lousy. A lot of clouds around. It was chilly. It was breezy. Not as nice as recent days. But the clearing is going to take place here before the evening is through. And even though a few patchy clouds will be overhead as Saturday begins, we're in for a pretty nice start to the weekend. And I wanted to touch base just briefly on temperature statistics now that we're halfway through the month of March, uh, second warmest first half of March on record, a whopping 14.7 degrees, warmer than the average. Now the second half of the month, it's gonna be like flipping a switch. First half warm, second half, I wouldn't call it cold, but uh, there will be more frequent cool days, that is for sure. This is today's Climate uh, Prediction Center outlooks for uh, the six to 10 day period, the eight to 14 day period, and then the longer range, weeks three and four. And as you can see, this doesn't look like a super cold pattern by any stretch of the imagination, but it just won't be as warm as it has been. Uh, compared to the average for a lot of the last couple of months. And there's even a chance, weeks three and four, that we see some pretty nice, uh, a pretty nice bounce back in our temperatures. I'm not real confident on that idea. Uh, if I were drawing this week in three and four map, I wouldn't paint quite as much orange. Uh, but it's possible that as we get into uh, kind of that second week of April, um, we see a, a milder pattern developing. But the, uh, the second half of March and probably the first handful of days of April, all of them likely to be 
quite a bit different than we've gotten used to. I don't think we're going to see 70 to 75 degrees again, probably until sometime in April, and probably not real early April either. In the meantime, nice start to the weekend for tomorrow. Any patchy clouds early will be gone by midday. Uh, we'll spend the afternoon in sunshine, a, a brisk southwesterly wind, but it'll be a warmer wind than today as temperatures get into the upper 50s. Now we have this cold front coming our way tomorrow night. It's a pretty strong one. It won't produce much rain, and there's probably no thunder with this, but there'll be a band of showers that pushes through probably after dark, uh, maybe closer to 9, 10, 11 o'clock, midnight. Uh, and that'll be it. So that'll be gone by the time we get up Sunday morning. And Sunday will start with a little sun. I think the clouds win the battle for the afternoon. It's going to feel quite a bit different Sunday afternoon compared to Saturday. It'll be kind of like the change we had today. And yes, I do think that the air will be cold enough to support some snow flurries starting late Sunday night into Monday as this trough of low pressure pivots down through the Great Lakes and starts to kick up the lake effect snow machine. Weekend forecast, take advantage of tomorrow. And a lot of people will. This will be a big day at bars and restaurants, St. Patrick's Day weekend. And uh, since the weather's not great and a lot of places aren't open on Sundays, uh, Saturday is going to be a pretty big day at local businesses. And it'll be a fine afternoon to take that green beer out onto the patio if you take a light jacket with you. 59 on Saturday, but only 44 Sunday. It's going to feel like the 30s. Maybe there's even a sprinkle or a shower on Sunday. Snowflake or two in the mix, perhaps, especially late in the day and into the nighttime hours and into early next week as well. As far as the snow aspect of this with the lake effect, um, Monday into Tuesday in particular, I could see where on some grassy surfaces occasionally we're going to get covered up, mainly north of Interstate 80. Uh, I could even see a couple or a handful of inches once you're up towards I-90, Ashtabula County over towards Erie and Buffalo. Um, but even that is going to be mostly, it'll have to come at night. Uh, during the day, it's going to be it's going to be hard, I think, to see much in the way of accumulation on paved surfaces with, uh, you know, being the second half of March and the road surfaces will be fairly warm. Now, if it comes down hard enough, yeah, you can you can still see some accumulations, but it does have to come down pretty hard in order to cause many road issues in March, particularly the second half of March. So bottom line, there'll be a few mood snowflakes around our area, and we might have to watch for some late accumulations early next week, mostly at night and mostly up towards I-90. In the meantime, thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Friday evening. Hope you and yours have a great night, a great weekend. I will see you right back here on Monday.